بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم ان كحمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم ان كحمد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome to this video um on this video we're in this video we're going to be talking about the power of al kitab so we all know the famous story of hazrat sulaiman asking the jinn to bring him the takht of uh, the the throne of bilqis the queen of sheba and basically um one of the human beings there who had ilm of the kitab said that he could bring it faster than even a jinn could bring it and um and he brought it um within a, a blink of Hazrat Sulaiman al-Islam asking for it and so this this power was given to him because he had ilmul kitab now this ilmul this power that he had from ilmul kitab is available to all of us um if we have ilm of the kitab there's many stories of Hazrat Ali radiyallahu you know uh, what he did at Khaybar tearing down the door there's other stories that are not uh, maybe not as well uh, not as mutawatir which is basically he was attacked on his way back from Yemen or his way to Yemen by enemies and a whole army and he 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 fought them um successfully uh, there are stories of that kind about Hazrat Ali radiyallahu and basically what it's saying this this story is in the Quran itself this is not a sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's a sahaba of Hazrat Sulaiman who has been given ilmul kitab so because Hazrat Sulaiman has been uh, given the uh, khilafa and this person has been given ilmul kitab they can he is allowed to do something like this through the ilm of the kitab that he has so basically what we're doing is we're going to be trying to discover in the quran which which is al kitab right quran is al kitab so we will be trying to discover what how do we acquire that type of power and the power now this may seem like if you're a, you know a traditional muslim or you know just like a good muslim this might seem like a discussion that's a little woo woo or might not be i don't do this type of discussion often but this this is a true ilm and any alim will tell you that this is an ilm that the book will give you power right it will give you capacity to do things if you if you know the true ilm of this kitab and so we're seeking to acquire it and we're doing it through the quran so on this channel basically every morning i get up and usually i take a name of allah and i take a name of the quran itself like al kitab mubin al quran kareem kalamullah nur huda and and we look at the ayah in the quran in which it's mentioned and then we look at the pattern of usage with which it's mentioned right so basically that's what we're going to be doing here too and we have many ayah that we're going to look at directly that mention kitab and all these instances so with that uh hopefully not too long introduction 3 minutes let's get started so <clears throat> first and foremost this is the the this is going to tell us that the type of knowledge that is in the kitabun mubin this ayah right here it's 116 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wama da'abatin wama min da'abatin uh, and not any creature moving creature fi ul ardi on earth illa is on earth illa ala allah except that allah uh, uh, rizquha is its prov uh, provides its provision um allah is its provision wa ya'lamu and he knows mustaqarraha its dwelling place wa mustaw mustawda'aha and its place of storage kullan all fi kitabin mubin it is all in kitabun mubin so this type of knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is in kitabun mubin now we will look at that the quran is actually kitabun mubin and we will look at ayah that will establish that this is an ism of the quran here even um it is not translated in that same way it's a clear register so this register is making a, something different than the quran right but we will see that this is actually a name of the quran so kullun fi kitabun mubin so this knowledge that allah has he knows its place of dwelling and place of storage um so this knowing of every moving creature right this knowing of its place of dwelling and place of storage 
meaning like like acorn like if a, like a chipmunk stores acorns or a squirrel stores acorns or you know like wolves like to bury pieces of meat like this type of thing he knows its place of dwelling and place of storage so this is a knowledge that is like like of the physical world it's a knowledge that is of the empirical world it's a knowledge that is having to do with animals um with the world uh you know nature uh in the dunya it is a knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so this type of knowledge is not talking about you know ilmul ghaib it's not talking about you know ilmul akhlaq it's not talking about no moral knowledge it's talking about the knowledge of specifics uh, uh having to do with the life of every single animal on earth wama uh, min da'abatan fi al ardi so and i think we're included as human beings in this uh, but basically Allah is saying every uh, every living thing every living thing its place of dwelling and where it stores its its sustenance is known to Allah this is the type of knowledge Allah is talking about this is not you know a knowledge of the angels it's a knowledge of living things in on our earth right illa ala um ul ardi fi ul ardi in the earth Right. So this knowledge is in Kitabun Mubin. This knowledge is in Kitabun Mubin. Right? And all is in a clear register. This knowledge is in Kitabun Mubin. And this Kitabun Mubin is in the Quran. Right? This this Kitabun Mubin is the Quran. Right? So we can get this knowledge from the Quran. It is Kitabun Mubin. Um Kullun all fi kitabun mubin. So all is in. So not only is Allah saying that this knowledge and this type of knowledge is in kitabun mubin, He's saying kullun fi kitabun mubin. So He's saying it in the context of this is the knowledge that Allah has, and then He's saying kullun fi kitabun mubin, meaning this knowledge also is in the kitabun mubin, but so is all other knowledge. Kullun fi kitabun mubin, right? Um. <clears throat> Okay, so we see that um, that all knowledge is in Kitabun Milbin, and specifically the point here that the the knowledge of living creatures and the knowledge of the empirical world, all of that is also in Kitabun Mubin. So that that is clear that Kitabun Mubin has like empirical information, empirical knowledge in it about the world that can be found in it if if Allah gives you the grace to find it, it is in there. You can find it in there. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so this is the second occurrence. We see that the ilm of the kitab actually has practical power. It's effective. There's some when you gain the ilm of the kitab, there's an effectiveness that's possible for you um, to in, in, influence the world in non-ordinary ways, right? And we will see that kitab is used similarly to this ayah um, <clears throat> in this ayah. Um, just an interesting note. Um, I'm I don't uh, subscribe to Shia or Sunni or anything like that. Uh, I just like studying the Quran. But this this thing here is um this is a Shia site. It's uh, but this is the only place I could find um, Hazrat Suleiman and the Queen of Sheba. The, what ayat this was in when I googled it, right? So when I googled it, this was the only site that came up to tell me. So I just clicked on it to to find the verses. Uh, so if you're watching this and you have a concern, just know that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so wama uh, min da'abat. Oh, we did this one, and okay, so the next one, this is the one where Hazrat Sulaiman um, turns to the assembly of jinn. Now I've done videos where we talk about the whole context of the story of Hazrat Sulaiman and the Queen of Sheba. That's not our purpose here, and I don't want to make the video longer than it needs to be. So let's just uh, look at the ayah that talk about the kitab. So Allah says, uh, O assembly of jinn, which of you will bring me her throne before they come in, come to me in submission? Um, <clears throat> so he's asking the jinn to use their power to go get the throne of Sheba before uh, Bilgis, the queen of Sheba, arrives. A powerful one from among the jinn said, so look at this. It's not that all the jinn can do this. It's a powerful one from amongst the jinn. So meaning, yes, the jinn have different powers in us. They can do different things. But... 
uh, this one who could do this was a powerful one, meaning he wasn't an ordinary jinn who said that he could do this so fast. He said, "Fala if kala if riyatun a strong one mina ul jinni from the jinn ana atiyaka." Uh, I will uh, give it to you. I will bring it to you. Bihi kabla an takuma before you rise min makamihi makamika before you rise from your place. Fa inni alehi and indeed I am for it la kawiyun amin. I am surely strong and trust me. Meaning I'm strong enough to do it, and you can trust me to do it before you rise from your place. And then. قَالَ أُلَّذِينَ إِنَّهُ said one now the identity is the person who said their identity is about to be described قُلْ أُلَّذِينَ إِنَّهُ with him إِلْمٌ أُلَّذِينَ إِنَّهُ with him إِلْمٌ مِنُ الْكِتَابِ so this person had knowledge he had ilm of the kitab what kitab? كتاب المبين Right, kitab in mubin. So he had knowledge, ilmun minul kitabi of the book. So he said, Ana, 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 Ati yaka bihi kab kabla an yartada. Um, I will bring it to you before uh your gaze returns to you tarfuka. Uh, meaning you can blink and I will have the throne before you. Then when Ra'u, he saw it, Mustakarrin, and so basically he said this, Ra'ahu. the throne was there. So he said, I will bring it back to you before you can blink, and, and then the throne was there. So there's an experiential quality to the language here, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing what this man did. He said, I'll bring it back to you before you can blink, and Hazrat Suleiman didn't even need to blink, and the throne was there. So he said it, and the throne was there. This is the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to this person because he had ilmul kitab. And this is not a modza. Remember, this is not a nabi. This is a sahaba of the nabi, Sulaiman alayhi salam. But even, and Hazrat Sulaiman cannot even do this, right? Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam has not been given this power to do this. But this person, even though he's not a nabi, he has ilm of the kitab. And be based upon his ilm of the kitab, this is a power that Allah has given him. It's not something that is a miracle from Allah. It's not a mudza. It's not Moses' staff, which Hazrat Musa al-Islam has been given as a, is not his power, but the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing it. This is ilm. This is power that has been given to the servant. He can exercise it whenever he wants. Ilmun minul kitabi, because he has ilm of the kitab, he can do this. He can tell Hazrat Sulaiman, I can bring it to you before you blink. And even before he blinks, the throne is there. Right? Um, and we even see Hazrat Sulaiman then says, This is a test. I have to be grateful for this. Um, because Allah gave me this. And he's saying that this is also astonishing for Hazrat Sulaiman al-Islam, right? This is astonishing for even Hazrat Sulaiman al-Islam. And Hazrat Sulaiman al-Islam, you know, is, is one of the prophets who's given the most amazing wonders in his court, you know. And it's amazing for him and he's grateful for, for the thing. So this is not like an ordinary thing. And even Hazrat Sulaiman is astounded. Um, so this ilm is from the kitab. Okay, um, what is the next ayah? Asma ul Quran. Okay, 174. Um, so now we have to look at a little bit. The first ayah we looked at is Kitabun Mubin, is the, the one, remember the knowledge of the living things, uh, is in the Kullin fi Kitabun Mubin. Kullin fi Kitabun Mubin. So let's look at what Mubin means for a second. So, يَا يُحَ النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْحَانٌ O people, O humanity actually, surely there has come to you بُرْحَانٌ a uh, irrefutable proof مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ from your Lord وَأَنزَلْنَا and we have sent it down إِلَيْكُمْ upon you uh, نُورٌ مُبِين a uh, light that is مُبِين that is luminous, uh, that is clear نُورٌ مُبِين we have sent down to you a, a clarifying uh, brilliant, luminous light. Nurun Mubin. 
So that's how it used. We'll come back to this because in the Quran, there's names of the Quran and there's sifat that are attributed to it. For example, there's Quran on Arabiun. The Quran is name of the Quran and Arabiun is a sifat that is attributed to the Quran. Now, Kitab, you will never f find Kitab on Arabiun. That doesn't occur. Kitab is the name of the Quran. Quran is the name of the Quran. But Kitab doesn't receive the description of Arabiun. Quran receives the description of Arabiun. Right? Nurun Mubin. But this Nurun Mubin, <clears throat> Mubin is a quality and Nur is the name of the Quran. And Allah uses uh, Mubin with Kitabun Mubin and Nurun Mubin. Right? These are, or Hakkun Mubin. Which are the highest names of the Quran or Nur, Haq and Kitab. These are some of the highest names of the Quran. And this is a quality Allah uses with the highest names of the Quran. Uh, I've done other videos on it but I can't, I can't go back into that right now. But this Mubin is a very high quality that is only used to describe the highest names of the Quran. And we'll talk about that more later. But here we'll come back to this ayah because right now we haven't established a link between Nur and Kitab and we're, we're, we haven't come to Nur yet. We we're still focusing on Kitab so let's come back to this ayah. Um, so Allah says, Ya yuhal kitabu kad ja'akum There comes to you Rasuluna, a messenger, yubayyinu, making clear lakum kathiran, much mimma kuntum, that you used to takhfuna, conceal, minul kitabi from the book, wa ya'fu, and overlooking an kathiran, much kad ja'akum. Surely, kad ja'akum, surely there has come to you min Allahi nurun wa kitabun mubin. So we see here, nurun wa kitabun mubin. Allah links nur and kitab and then gives it the same qualifier. So, nurun kitabun mubin. So, we know that this mubin is referring to both nur or kitab. It's either referring to both nur and kitab or it's only referring to kitab. So, min Allahi nurun wa kitabun uh, mubin. So basically, for um, what we can see here is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is by saying Kitabun Mubin here, um, he is. This is a name of the Quran, Kitabun Mubin, Kitabin Mubin, Kitabin Mubin is a name of the Quran, um, and we see it clearly here. Uh, in this Allah sa because in this ayah it becomes clear that it is referring to the Quran. O people of the scripture, there has come to you our messenger making clear to you much of what you used to conceal of the scripture and overlooking much. There has come to you from Allah a light and a clear book. Wa kitabun mubin. Again here, uh, Alif Lam Ra, this is the next ayah, 1212. Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitabul Mubin. So, Kitabul Mubin, these ayat that we are reciting, these Tilka are of the Kitabul Mubin. And so, it is the Kitabul Mubin that contains the knowledge of the life of every living thing, its, its, its home and its storage place. And not only that, Kulli fi Kitabun Kulli. Fi kitabun mubin. Everything is in the kitabun mubin. So everything is in kitabun mubin. Um, and these ayat are of the kitabun mubin. Inna anzalna hu Quranin Arabian la allakum ta'akilun so that you may understand. So again, we see Quranun Arabian. But we do we see Kitabun Mubin and we see Quranun Arabiun. So Arabi is a quality attributed to the Quran. Mubin is a quality attributed to Kitab or Nur. Tawseen tilka ayatul Quranin wa Kitabun Mubin. Kitabin Mubin. Again, there's Kitabun Mubin, there's Quran, but Mubin is only here because there's Kitab, right? Now, Allah does this sometimes because Quran and Kitab are closely related. When Quran and Kitab are there, Allah will use Mubin. But when there is no Kitab, there will not be Mubin. But Quran, it, there will never be only Quran and Mubin. Ayata tilka tasin. 
Mm, one moment. Okay. Okay, so the last ayah that mentioned Mubin is what Ul Kitabul Mubin. Hamim wa Ul Kitabun Mubin. Inna ja'alnahu, inna ja'alnahu Quranan Arabian la allakum ta'akilun. Indeed, we have made it Arabic Quran. So this is something that I wish to ask an Arabic scholar, but this is for me clear. Uh, so let's let me just explain what what I there's something I see here, and let me explain it. So this is a way of swearing when Allah says uh, something, uh, wa at the beginning and says the real the name of something. It's Allah is swearing by it. Wa ul kitabul mubin. Inna ja'alnahu Quranan Arabiyun. لَأَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Now, everywhere else in the Quran where جَعَلْنَهُ is used, Allah said, I made the Kaaba as a sanctuary or as a protected place. Um, he says, I made Ibrahim into Imam al-Nas. He said, I'm going to make a Khalifa upon the earth. Usually, Allah has some, some person or some object that he makes into something more than it, what it used to be, right? And so there's always something present that Allah makes into something else. That is the usage of Ja'alna in the Quran. So when Allah says, Well, Kitabul Mubin, Inna Ja'alna Quranun Arabiun, I get that this wa means that Allah is swearing by it. But if this is grammatically possible, I think this is also the case that Allah says, We made the Kitabul Mubin into Quranun Arabiun. Right? So the Kitabul Mubin is the essential reality of the Kitab that is with Allah. This is the ilm of Allah itself. Kitabul Mubin is the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself in its differentiated, explicated form. Nur is the name is the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its whole undifferentiated form. Kitabul Mubin is still perfect, it's still complete, it's still whole, but it's explicated into kalimat and ayat and differentiated into tafsilat. But the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wahid. Right, so this is Kitabul Mubin, and and then Allah makes the Kitabul Mubin to send it to us on Earth. He puts it in the language uh, of the people, and he puts Wal Kitabul Mubin Inna Jalnahu Quranun Arabiun, and he Quranun Arabiun. He has made it a Quran that is Arabic. La Allah, Now this is also interesting. Um, when Allah uses a specific name of the Quran and says la la allakum so that you may he gives the purpose of of the sifat of the Quran so because it's Quran on Arabian it's in our language it's in a language we can read and reflect on it's a language we can understand the purpose of that is la allakum taqilun but for example if he said kitabul mubin la allakum if he said that then there would be a different purpose here right? there would be um, whatever purpose it would be different And then Allah says, "Wa innahu fi ummi, uh, innahu fi ummi ul kitabi. It is in um, the ummu ul kitab la daina la aliyun hakim la aliyun hakim. So ummu ul kitab is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's not something we can really differentiate uh, from Allah, but Allah does. He says ummu ul kitabi. So this Quran on Arabian is in Ummul Kitabi, and this Ummul Kitabi is the is the Nur of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's the Nur that is with Allah. This is the Ilm of Allah. Um, that's the Ummul Kitab. Is the origin of the Quran of the Kitab is the Ummul Kitab, and Allah says Quran on Arabian is in that. Is it in Ummul Kitab? Anyways, so that is the power of the book. Uh, we see the power of the book in this. If you're interested in knowing more about the name Al-Kitab itself, I have done a series where we discuss Al-Kitab in detail, the meaning of it, by looking at all the uses mentioned so many times in the Quran, maybe about 10 or 15 times. And so we look at every single usage of it in the Quran and it's exhaustive. So if you're interested in knowing more about the Kitab, please check out the videos that are on, on Al-Kitab. And uh, also there's another series on the word Mubin itself. But this particular video was supposed to be just about the power of Al-Quran and the power of Kitab and Mubin. And so I hope it was beneficial to you. I know it was beneficial to me. And inshallah, I will talk to you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.